Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Abbas, and with me here today I have Team 14259 Turbo V8 from San Ramon, California. They competed in December uh, at a qualifier, and they had the four highest records in California, setting them in back-to-back-to-back-to-back matches with Team 6165 MSET Cuttlefish, and they just had an incredibly fast robot in both autonomous, teleop, endgame, and I'm really looking forward to take a deep dive into their controls and subsystems, all that and more, coming up on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SolidWorks.com slash first to register your team. Leo and Veer, why don't we start with your guys' intake? I think one of the keys to having a very fast, autonomous, and doing so many cycles as you guys do is making sure your intake time is as low as possible. So walk us through your claw and your deposit and extension and everything and just how you make it so fast. Um, yeah, so basically um, for our horizontal, ex well, um, like we, hor we extend our intake horizontally by using a scissor lift thrown here. Um, this allows to like grab cones from far away. And then um, in the front, we have a front arm that flips down. So we can grab the cone um, like this and then move it back. This allows to like reach further than um, reach further to grab cones. Yeah, no, that and to add on to that. The yeah. scissor lift is definitely very impressive. And I think you guys are definitely like the first team that I've seen. Uh, with a scissor lift mechanism and I noticed it like when you guys were posting your initial videos on YouTube and so have you guys had any issues with like slop between the linkages or backlash or anything like that and how have you dealt with that if that's been an issue um so in the front of our robot we have a distance sensor right here I'm not sure if it's visible but this senses how far away it is from the wall and then it, we use that to um make sure that it doesn't like hit the wall or go too close or too far yeah, so it accounts for backlash. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's very impressive. And Veer, I think you were elaborating on the horizontal yeah. extension. So it's just three Misumi slides on each on like each side. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you guys were deciding, like it seems like it has just incredibly smooth motion, and that's very impressive. So when you guys were designing that system, were there like certain factors that you had to take into account, like with the scissor lift mechanism and like how that affected the speed and torque? of the overall system or was this sort of just like something you more prototyped uh in real life and did like rapid prototyping to figure out the best solution um yeah we um prototype a lot we actually went through like uh four or five iterations for the claw itself um right now we found that this is the best way because the horizontal extension and also the deposit have a take around the same time for extension and back mm -hmm. so by the time the deposit is back we will get like our second cone ready already yeah uh, we started like for our intake, we also started with this linkage claw in the beginning. That's um, a linkage claw that uses two servo. But we found it was too heavy, and now we just have 3D printed claw. So sure. it's lighter, and yes. Yeah. yeah, that's great. And so uh, going on to your claw and talking about your intake claw, how has that changed uh, except this iteration throughout the season, and what capabilities does it have? Uh, right now, our uh, with this new claw, uh, we can pick up fallen cones. Um, so for example, if a cone is falling like this, we're allowed to pick it up uh, like that and then drop it into our deposit and then and then we can later on like deposit wow. out later yeah no that's just incredible and when you guys figured this out was that sort of more of like a happy accident that you guys realized that or was that something planned like all the way from the beginning um it was more like just figuring it out like in the middle of the deposit like originally um this more talks more about the deposit but originally we start with a small cardboard box that has a uh, stop on the bottom and uh, we kind of just uh, iterated a lot, and then eventually we changed it into the current like basket version. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of it's a lot more flexible because we're allowed to like we're able to dump in the cones from any angle with the turret, mm -hmm. and that gives us like like um, more cycle time because we don't have to move the turret back and forth. Sure, and you know I think we've naturally moved on to your deposit and how it works. And so has this been the idea that you guys have had the entire season like for the deposit, or has it changed? And have you gone through iterations for like the base idea of like dumping into or like transferring into a um, like passive deposit type system? 
Yeah, so um, originally our first design is a claw to claw mechanism, but we found that a claw to claw mechanism takes like precision and also transfer takes a while for it to happen. Sure. And then we also wanted our deposit to be really flexible because as you can see in our match videos, we are we are currently dumping this on a second high pole, mm -hmm. but we are also able to dump this on the uh, closest high pole by using a linear servo in the um, servo like linear servo in the deposit to change the angling of our slide. So as you oh, can see wow. now, um, the uh, angle of our slide changes, so we can adjust how far it is. Okay, and so you control that by a linear servo, so you have like a lot less backlash and like a lot more rigidity. Uh, in the design yeah, overall, and, right? Yeah, a lot more control too. And mm -hmm. with this, uh, with the basket, this allows to like um, just move the um, like dump it in without like having too much um, difficulties. Because with the claw, that means we have to like realign everything. Because mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be really difficult to align with the different like movement parts. But yeah. with a basket, we can just dump it in. No, of course, of course, that makes complete sense. Uh, and so. <laughs> What slide system are you using to power your linear extension? I know for your intake, you said you're using Masumi slides, and those don't look like Masumi's, but of course I could be wrong. Yeah, so this these are just Viper slides, and then we use an 1150 RPM motor to like drive the slides, and it's bevel gear, so the motor is hidden inside of this channel, and mm -hmm. we tried to use two motors, but we found overheating problems, mm -hmm. so we just switched to one motor, and it worked. Okay, cool. And have you guys done like any testing on like the current draw of your motor to see like if you're at like the peak power output or if you can squeeze just those few more milliseconds out of the extension yeah so we did have problems with current draw so we started like we were blowing through fuses a lot and then switching to one motor helped but if current draw is like a big issue for you you can integrate the current draw and like lower the power to the motors based off of that so mm -hmm. we didn't have too many problems after we switched the motors to one motor and then um, one thing that helped, we greased the slides a lot. So the Viper slides, when you first get them, they come with a lot of resistance. Mm -hmm. But greasing them allows us to run it at a faster RPM. And then also the tension in the strings. Like the GoBuilda video says you should be able to play notes with the string. But we found better results when it was like slightly looser, mm -hmm. especially when running it at a faster RPM. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, that's very insightful. I'm sure teams will find that very useful. Uh, and going on to your bucket for the deposit. I've definitely seen a lot of changes to that throughout the season. And you guys also just showed like the cardboard box you started out with. So how's that changed? And how have you guys like decided what to do in the next iteration? Um. So for right now, we just found that sometimes we could miss the dump because um, we changed this uh, servo right here. So it's faster now, mm -hmm. but we have to rename it every time. And it's kind of hard to aim because especially since it's at an angle, Mm -hmm. uh, we are at. We're planning to add a latch in the future right here, so we can hold the clone upside down like that, and then mm -hmm. we can uh, drop it whenever we need to. Sure. Yeah, that 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 makes a lot of sense. And going through like the different uh, designs you've had for the bucket itself, like I see now, you have this very pocketed and very futuristic looking uh, deposit, and then you started out with like that cardboard box. Were there iterations in the middle, and like what did they look like? Oh, uh, yeah. So. Uh, we just uh, used the pot. There was originally we started with just like a PVC pipe, and then um, with the PVC pipe, it was a bit heavy because mm -hmm. um, it was like really thick, and also it was just like really rigid. With this thing, it's like flexible too. So if you like kind of bump into the wrong thing mm -hmm. or move the turn the wrong way, it won't like just completely like shatter. It will like kind of bend a little bit. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's... We also sort of made sure that uh, the cone wouldn't get stuck when we were dumping because a lot of times the ring around it would be too wide and it would get stuck. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really insightful into your hardware and I know your guys' software is equally as impressive. So let's move on to that. Uh, and to talk about that, we have Ethan joining us also remote. Um, I believe we have a distance sensor as Leo mentioned before. And we use that to make sure it like, doesn't do bad things, I guess. Uh, we have these two sensors for the turrets. Initially, we were going to go with that whole event driven thing, right? But we ran out of time, so we ended up just putting sleep functions everywhere, and I guess that worked. Um, we also have three odometers on the bottom that like localizes, and also a camera in front that um, detects April tax for the um, randomization. Yeah, and then we have encoders. Yeah, we have encoders everywhere. So the slides, the turret have encoders. Ethan mostly write like the uh, code, like so structure codes. Well, um, like most of them is me and Veer who like does like the actual autonomous coding. So he writes codes for like, for example, like the custom Roadrunner algorithm. He wrote the algorithm and those like structures. Originally, we were um, 
uh, we decided to not use Roadrunner because uh, we found that Roadrunner sometimes was getting was slower than just using a like a PID program, a custom PID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Roadrunner has like a motion profiler, which basically like speeds you up and decelerates you like proportionally, so that you maintain accuracy during your autonomous period. But we found our autonomous was just faster by just full sending it, and then we use a PID, an XY PID. There's like a Control Alt FTC page on it, mm -hmm. but we use a heading PID, an X and Y PID. So basically follow our paths and then we added the voltage compensation which makes it consistent because we mm -hmm. found without it it didn't and like i guess we started off using like bang bang so when it's not at the position just full send it but that was inaccurate and then time-based turns but that was inaccurate too so like the pids really helped so yeah yeah it seems like you guys have had a lot of iteration like in your software as well and so i think like my last question for you guys before we wrap up this interview is what are changes you guys are looking to make for the future i know you guys definitely don't want to just settle where you are and you're looking to get squeeze out those few more cones and those few more points so how are you going to do that um so we're just planning to optimize all of our subsystems there was there's many parts in our system that could be optimized many parts is like very loose and just in general, like not as well designed as it could be. So mm -hmm. we're just hoping to optimize all of those. Also make a robot smaller because our robot right now is uh, barely in the size of it. I see, I see. That's uh, very insightful. So Turbo V8, thank you very much. I think this interview has been great and I'm sure people will learn a lot from you guys for both your hardware, software, just general design progression throughout the season. So Ethan, Leo, Veer, and Cindy, thank you all. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm a boss. Thank you. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at Kettering.edu slash FIRST. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.